So let's get some reaction from the Republican side of the aisle with Texas Congressman and a member of the House Freedom Caucus, Louis Gohmert. Congressman, I want to ask you about something that Ann Coulter said last night. She called President Trump the biggest wimp ever to serve as President of the United States. Do you think that President Trump has caved to Speaker Pelosi? Uh, no, I don't think he's caved to Speaker Pelosi. Uh, this is uh, round one of a you know twelve round bout, maybe fifteen. But uh, so this and and this is a very strategic move on the president's part. I was visiting with him privately over the White House on Wednesday, and I know what he's doing. And this was a good move on his part. He has not capitulated on the wall. The problem is when you're dealing with leaders in a party who are more concerned about political victories than they are about protecting the country, then you you really have a tough time. And then when you've got a Senate that has people that got elected to do nothing uh, as Republicans except make uh, President Trump's life miserable, it, it's a tough but area to Congressman, navigate. Congressman, the, the question for weeks has been, you know, uh, who blinks first? How is this yeah. not President Trump blinking first? Well. You could say it's a blink, but the truth is uh, this comes back on February 15th. And the, also the truth is we have an invasion on our southern border. And I, I'm getting tired of hearing the liberals say, hey, the numbers were down last year. Either they're ignorant of the real facts or they're intentionally misleading the American people. The numbers were down overall last year, but in the last quarter, as they saw the Democrats may take over the House, as they took over the House, the numbers have skyrocketed. Congressman, and that's what the Border Patrol has said. So we've sure. got to do something. The president's not done yet. Well, Congressman, I'd like to play something that you said on this network uh, about a month ago. Okay. Watch this. Okay. How long should the president keep the government closed? You How do long? it till hell January, freezes over. February? Till hell freezes until over. So hell has yeah. clearly not frozen over, and the government <laughs> has reopened with no. zero dollars for the wall. So I just want yeah. to be clear here. You are standing by President Trump's decision yesterday to reopen the government without any wall funding. Yeah. Well, this is a recess. It is not, yeah, I would prefer that he just keep the, the, um, well, it, it, it's the Democrats. You would have they preferred if he had just. The, you would have preferred if you just kept the government shut down. Well, yeah, because uh, look, I was visiting with with our border patrolmen, with TSA people, and they don't want to. They can't say it publicly, but they have said, "Look, we're getting by, uh, except for the VA. The Veterans Administration was screwing over at TSA and and uh, other officials who were not getting paid, but everybody else was working with them." And they were saying, look, this is really hurting me, my family, but we know how badly we need a wall. If this is the sacrifice it takes to get a wall, then keep the government closed. And are you uh, worried so about this the, better the, not be the end of it. Are you worried about the, the political consequences, though, for, for your party and the president? Uh, I'd like to just pop up this Fox News poll that we have, which yeah. shows it asked people who were polled, you know, who do you think is most responsible for the shutdown? 51% uh, yeah. said the president, 34% said Democrats, 3% said Republicans in Congress. So you're actually in the clear. But, I mean, President Trump, 51% yeah, blame him. Are, are you worried about this heading into 2020? Yeah, well, not necessarily in 2019. Uh, we've seen, like, President Reagan uh, going into 1983, he was, the economy was bad, he was in big trouble, but things turned around in 1983 and 84, he had a massive wave election. So that can happen again. It is unfortunate that the American people could not look at one person willing to negotiate, bidding against himself, and another that was in Calcifer and say, we're not moving they, in transition, they would not move whatsoever and say, oh, we think it's the person that's trying to negotiate. It's his fault. That's unfortunate, but uh, perception in politics does make a difference. But we I have got to have a wall where we need it. That's the bottom line. The president understands Congressman, that. I only have a few more seconds, but really quick. Yeah. Congress has about three weeks to try to cut a deal now. And in order for a deal to be cut, there's got to be compromise on both sides. Would you be willing to compromise on something like protections for DACA recipients or TPS recipients? Yeah. 
look, uh, we, we, that would be bidding against ourselves, and I've never been in favor of that. And the Border Patrol says every time you guys talk DACA or amnesty, we get another huge surge. I don't want people dying on the way here or pulled into sex trafficking. Let's just get it done, get the wall where we need it, and move on. Then we can work things out very easily on who's here. Congressman, thank you for coming on. Appreciate thank your insight. You. Thank you, Christian. Leland. Thank you. All right.